So you may recall in the last video, um, I showed a project to install a sub-panel in the garage, uh, which allowed me to add a bunch of uh, outlets around the workbench and a 215 or a 220 rather uh, bolt outlet, uh, which I was using for a welder, which I didn't quite have yet. Well, since then, I've gone out and I've uh, acquired a Miller Multimatic uh, 215, which can do both uh, MIG and TIG welding. So kind of a nice unit to have around the shop. Um, I was a little worried that with the TIG it only does a, a scratch start, but it turned out that uh, uh, that wasn't a problem at all. It starts very nicely and uh, run a, ran a nice b a couple of beads uh, using the TIG function. So we're uh, doing some welding, you need a place uh, to work. You can see I bought a uh, sheet of uh, quarter inch uh, steel that fits nicely on the workbench. And uh, while it's a little bit on the heavy side, it's not so heavy or big that I can't move it. So for larger projects, I can just put this uh, plate steel on some saw horses and use it as my workbench. You can see here the Harbor Freight uh, portable bandsaw, which has really come in handy for cutting metal and getting nice clean edges. Um, really a good investment. So my wife got me this uh, welding cart uh, for my birthday, and it's uh, set up pretty nice. It's got drawers to uh, store stuff, and uh, originally came with a rack to hold uh, one gas bottle. Since it does both TIG and MIG, um, and I actually had the gas bottles that came with the unit I bought, um, I decided I really needed to hook both bottles up. So my first little project was to change the um, the, the mount where that chain attaches to uh, to accommodate two bottles. I basically cut them up and then you might be able to see that little well there I weld them together to uh, accommodate the two bottles. My next little project was uh, more carpentry than welding. Uh, you can see I added these two shelves in the back of the garage uh, and very handy for storing stuff. But round uh, pieces like uh, conduit and copper tubing and so on would roll off the shelf. So I built these brackets, you can see, with a little foot at the end to stop the round stock from rolling off. Not a major weld job, but still came in pretty handy having a welder around. For my latest uh, project to just stay at home and stay out of trouble, my wife asked me to come up with a whimsical little um, lawn ornament, a garden uh, sculpture. So this is what I came up with, kind of a uh, little stick surfer dude kind of deal. Anyways, cut the pieces, the uh, uh, Harbor Freight portable bandsaw came in really handy for doing all this and uh, now I gotta do a little grinding and welding and it'll be all set to go. So now I've moved the uh, plate seal from my workbench over to the sawhorses and uh, have myself a little welding table ready to go. And there he is all welded up and in the garden. <laughs> So what we're using uh, to construct our little surfer dude garden sculpture are uh, these uh, fence posts readily available from Home Depot and other places. Uh, each one's about six feet uh, tall and costs less than five bucks a piece. So here you can see the uh, cross section is uh, pretty thick and nice and sturdy so uh, it's really perfect for what we're doing 
the one issue is that uh, you know you can see the the arms are kind of curved away. So when we uh, match up the various pieces, we're going to have to do a little trimming and curving to get a nice tight fit for welding. So my daughter saw this surfer dude and said, hey, I want one of those, but I want mine to be a little taller. So I started to ask her, well, which way do you want them pointing, etc." And she said, like this. So uh, this one's going to be a little taller than the uh, last one. And uh, in order to do that, these pieces are going to be a little bit longer. And this angle will be a little tighter than what we had for the last one. So our first uh, piece, this, the straight pieces that go in the ground, will be uh, 42 inches, 18 inches below the surface, another 18 inches for the uh, lower part of the leg to the knee, and then an additional six inches of um, straight piece, uh, giving us something to uh, bang on to drive the stake into the ground. All right, here we have the uh, legs set out. Look pretty reasonable. Uh, that little section for the torso will make that about eight inches. And then it looks like 20 inch pieces going up for the torso. Uh, ought to work out really well. Before we can even uh, tack weld, we'll have to use this uh, grinder with a flapper disc to uh, just grind away that um, paint on the areas that we're going to um, weld. Even just for tack weld, we want to clean it up. Okay, we got the uh, paint cleaned off, and we'll just throw on a couple of tacks, keep it together. Okay, we got the uh, legs welded on, and uh, now we're going to go up and tack the, uh, well, I guess the waist piece there. And then from there, we'll be able to start working on the torso. Okay, here you can see we uh, tack welded a little angle iron onto a saw blade uh, to make the uh, head and neck. See, so I cut a, uh, a little groove onto the side there to try to follow the contour of the metal. And that'll fit on real nice. You can see that. And we uh, line it up 90 degrees. This is uh, the arm going up. And uh, yeah, you can see we'll put the hand on the arm when uh, we get to it next. All right, so I got the uh, legs up to the uh, waist all put together. I got the uh, arm shoulder and uh, the head all put together. I put a drop cloth uh, over the bottom of the legs, the part that would be in the ground, just to check things out. And uh, uh, the way I got a space now looks pretty good. And that would give us a uh, height of about 5'9". So uh, just about right. So now I just have to uh, measure, cut the uh, pieces for the torso. And then uh, glue it all together. All right, we've got the uh, torso pieces uh, cut and lined up, and we're ready to tack those in place. And uh, then the head will be the last thing. Okay, just add the head on. Nice little weld up there, and down the seam, and we're good to go. So, looking at the part that'll just be sticking out above the ground, looks like we're right about uh, five six five eight and uh, that should be just about perfect so to uh, cover up the uh, welding spots in the bare metal I put on uh, Bristolian primer and now I'm gonna test I got um, basically hunter green and dark hunter green see which one is the closest to the uh, original color and we'll uh, patch it up looks like the uh, dark hunter green is closer uh, not an exact match, but close enough. Hey, here we go. Delivery in my 1965 Chevy pickup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 
That surfer dude. Got it where you want it? All right, time to bang it in. Yep. Woo! Why? When I uh, attached the uh, saw blade to the angle iron, um, I only used a few tack welds. And uh, obviously that wasn't good enough. So when we uh, do the repair here, we'll, we'll run a full bead and attach the saw blade securely to the angle iron. Fortunately, this welder is uh, pretty compact and uh, lightweight. And so uh, it also will run on either 110 or 220. So we don't need a 220 outlet uh, which will allow us to uh, just take the welder over to the site and patch the head back on. So what we need is uh, some flux core wire. Uh, that'll allow us to weld without the inert gas and uh, change the adapter plug to the uh, 110 outlet. And uh, we'll be able to just take an extension cord and plug into a convenient outlet and uh, weld right there on the spot. I clearly could have done better uh, with regard to full safety gear. Okay, surfer dude installed. And uh, just the way Amy had planned it. Yep, just about right. <laughs>